Hallelujah! It's always a joy to come to your screens every Sunday morning with the unadulterated Word of God by the Reverend Ransford Obin, the Chief Servant of the CCC Churches Worldwide. You are welcome to our live broadcast. Stay tuned and be blessed. Praise the Lord for another opportunity to worship the Lord together. I'm Rans for the Bin, the chief servant of Calvary Charismatic Center. I'm here with Reverend Texan of AUDRC uh, CCC. And please, wherever you are, if you can, I will want you to stand on your feet and join us as we are going to worship the Lord together this morning. God says that where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of the people. You can turn your bedroom. You can turn your living room into a place of worship this morning. Because the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. If there's anything God deserves from each one of us, that every day when we get up, we will worship and honor his holy name. So join us in singing to the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord, somebody. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. He's worthy to be praised this morning. He's worthy to be glorified. Lift up your voice and give him a shout of glory. Shout unto the Lord. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Shall we lift up our hands to Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to say, Come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. my heart, Lord Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, come into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in To my life, Lord Jesus. Let that be your prayer this morning. Lift up your voice to me. That he shall come into your life. That he shall take absolute control and preeminence over you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of our prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We bless his holy name. We want to praise the name of the living God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Oh, my soul, do 
Do you not know? Have you not heard? It's been told from the beginning The Lord your God is on your side yeah. Oh my soul, don't be afraid Obey the Lord by His righteousness and power He will strengthen, He will guide And I will soar on wings like eagle Held by the hand of God I will run and not go tired When on His name I For the Lord, for the Lord It's never, it's never weary His ways are beyond my thoughts I will trust Him with all my heart I will trust in Him I will trust in Him With all my heart Oh my soul Oh my soul Do you not know? Have you not heard? It's been told from the beginning The Lord your God is on your side hey oh my soul don't be afraid obey the lord by his righteousness and power he will strengthen he will guide say and i will soar on wings like eagle held by the hand of god i will rise and not go tired when all is said, for the Lord, for the Lord is never, is never weary. His ways are beyond my thoughts. I will trust in Him with all my heart. I will trust in Him. I will trust in Him with all my heart. Come on, little boy, say. Your hands, never let me go. I want to spend eternity with you, and now that you need everything is different, everything's so different, Lord. I know I'm not the same, my life will change. I want to be with you, I want to pay it now that you need everything. Different Lord, I know I'm not the same. My life will change. I wanna be with you. Say hold me in, hold me in your arms. Never let me go. I, I wanna spend the eternity with. Say and now that you need everything is different. Everything's so different, Lord. I know I'm not the same. My life will change. I want to be with you. And now, and now, that's you need. Everything is different. Everything's so different, Lord. I know I'm not the same. My life will change. I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to draw closer to you, Lord. I want to live for you, Jesus. I want to walk with you, Lord. I want to walk with you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You alone deserve it. You alone deserve it. You alone deserve it. If I leave, I'll leave for you. And should I die, I die for you. In all my ways, I'm ever yours. If I live, I live for you. I live, I live, I live for you. I live for you. 
say if I live, if I live, I live for you, I live for you. And should I die, should I die, I die for you, I die for you. So Jesus, all to Jesus, I surrender, I, I surrender all to Him, to Him I freely, I will live, I will live alive and try.
that's all I want to the Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Lord, I give it all to you, Lord. I give myself away so you can you. I give myself, I give myself away. I give my heart to you. Thank you, Jesus. Take control of God. Take control of God. Let your name be sought. Let your name be glorified. Wherever you are, lift up your voice, oh Lord. I render my heart to you, oh God. Take absolute control. Use me as you want, oh God. You are the porter, and we are the clay, oh God. Mold us, mold us into your likeness. We want to be like you, Jesus. We put our trust in your call, no other call. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, oh God. But we believe in your name, your name is a strong and a mighty tower. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I want to talk about what happens when Somebody said he has given his life to Jesus Christ. And then we say, "Me no more a kasafa." Say, "Obi kase, what the no ama Yeshua ni a esi wa na brabu." And it's very, very important. Now, and who hear ye? And I want to start with our life before Christ. Me be say, "Me sha say a bra ye sha ya bra bo ansana ye be who Christo no." Everybody before you came to know Christ. As your Lord and Savior. The Bible described to us what our state, our condition, our relationship with God, what it is, and how God looks at each one of us. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, everybody living on earth that has not given his life to Christ. You are dead. That is how the Bible describes anybody that has not given his life to Christ. Paul says that, and you who were made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin. You know, when the Bible talks about death, it, death has this meaning. Death means separation. You know, man is made up of body, soul, and spirit. So we have Physical death and spiritual death. When somebody's soul departs from the body, we say death has taken place. Because there's a separation between the body, this body, 
and the soul and the spirit. Whenever a separation takes place, death has taken place. And I'm saying to you, Abba, Nipediano, and your crani, who who munti, yakase nipano, wewu. That's why the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. Tina trust and nakase etasa onipa owu prekupe. And after death. Judgment. That is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. So when anybody living on earth who has not given his life to Christ, the Bible says that spiritually you are dead. Trust him no Emma Yehu said, Physically, you are alive. But spiritually, you are dead. Why? Because I've explained that death means separation. And so, so long as God is concerned, you have no relationship with God. You've been separated from God. And therefore, spiritually, you are dead. So the Bible tells us that. That's why Ephesians is saying that you who were dead in sin and trespass. So anyone who has not given his life to Christ, you have no relationship with God. And so, you are internally separated from God. Until you give your life to Christ. The Bible tells us that all have sinned. That is why there's the need for every one of us to give our life to Christ. Because we have all fallen short of God's standard. And so, once you give your life to Christ, Christ is the only person that can restore you he will make you alive. That is why Ephesians 2 1 says that, and you he made alive. It means when you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit of God come to energize your dead spirit so that you can become alive you become sensitive to the things of God you who were had no interest in the things of God now you all of a sudden you begin to develop an interest in the things of God and that is what God wants all of us to come to. That is the place he wants us to be. So if you have not given your life to Christ, you are not a born again Christian, spiritually you are dead. Even though physically you are alive. And that is what the Bible is describing our life before Christ. But when you give your life to Christ, something different happens. Because as soon as you give your life to Christ, when you heard the gospel message, the Bible says that you will be saved. You, you get born again. Christ come into your life. You see, what happened is that as the word is being preached, the Holy Spirit begin to work in your life. And 
and you surrender your life to Christ. And you become a brand new person. And God now become the center of your life. And now your life matters to you. And you want to please God. Everything you want to do, you ask yourself, is it going to bring honor and glory to God? So that you come to the place where you can say with Paul, now, in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that I've been crucified with Christ why? because my old life I have crucified it I'm no longer the one I used to be because by the grace of God Jesus has come into my life and when Jesus comes into your life he gives you a new desire you see, that is the reason why those of you who do not know Christ sometimes you ask yourself how can these people I mean, how can you live on earth here? A young man, you don't drink, you don't chase women, you don't do all this, and how can you be happy? Because as a normal young man, or young lady, a Ghanaian, the fun is that when you have money, you go to pop and on, on, on Fridays and Saturdays and uh, you enjoy yourself and get a lady that you have not married be, be, beside you and, and you call that, that is life. Let me tell you, because you don't know Christ, and I'm saying we Christ don't know. And if you know Christ, so we need Christ, and you've been doing that. Now, so we go so yes, sir. You know the secret, and then now we need. You have not fully surrendered to God. Far wa brabo inara ema Christ. That is why you find fulfillment and joy in those things. And in tina sa ni ema yen sanom ne ma pen ema we need you. Well, listen to me. Not hear me. The Bible says, "Trust and listen." Oh, taste and see. I say, "Brat, na be soche." For the Lord is good. Ne ni anko pono oye. Those of us when we gave our life to Christ, yenum abra yadi yehuma Christo no. At a young age, abra na ye ye mranti yenu. At the age of forty, abra na me di infie do na yenu. And I fully surrender my life to Christ. Na no pari mu mi jai ma bra. And started living the Christian life. Let me tell you, my main country. I don't do these things, and I'm fully satisfied. I don't think if there's anybody who want to say that, look, uh, 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 he's satisfied in life and is content in life. You are seeing one. I am fully joyful and satisfied every day because of Christ. You know, if you see a pastor who is chasing women and he's married, I want to tell you he's only doing it just for money. Because he needs to justify why he needs to be paid every month. But he doesn't know Christ. If he knows Christ, he has not fully surrendered to Christ. When you, when you fully surrender to Christ, I want you to listen to me. You see, maybe your life has been exposed to somebody who says he goes to church, who says he knows Christ, and yet you look at your own life, you are better than that 
bia we hie obi a wose me kwa sorry me a christo ni nanso ne ye a oye no se wo hwe wa brabo mpo a wutumi ka se mpo wo dia ne ye sen no because you don't call yourself a go go christian mpo anya se wo ye christo ni ankasa maybe you are not a tongue talking christian ebi on kankasa fofro and so you look at those people who say they are tongue talking na wo hwe won na wo kankasa fofro na abrabo a wo bo na and let you look at their life and you look at yours that you don't go to church you are better than them na wo hwe se wo abrabo en wo mpo a wo nkwa sori wo de enu mpo e ye sen wo because those people have not fully surrendered to Christ so when you look at their life there's nothing that attracts you that you should even join them and you say wo hwe wa brabo a biblia re ni ho e hwe un kran say empo ko ka wo ho and you say if this is the case na say say na sorry no etie dia then i'll better stay at and then say me tena fie you know Uh, those people who have lived under my ministry for many years bebrenu a watena medwuma me ye e wanyame mu enfie bebrenu because i became a pastor at a younger age so abra nyame fra me me be ye sofo no na me mfie no e wo form at the age of 22 na me di enfie edionu mienu i started pastoring and i'm a sure say say me di sofo today and nay by the grace of god and nam o nyankopon adu mu no i am 64 years of age me nya enfie duosua enai and you look at me and i don't look like that na o hwe me a otumu say me mfie na say nru hompo i'm still vibrant full of energy because when you give your life to Christ and you fully surrender you are satisfied in life no, me, i am satisfied me go sora e som nya me e wa ho dimu e fri say say we wa brabo e ma christo a wa koma to yam na we ye nya me adwuma no a ho din so listen tie jesus said yesu e ka say it's the life of a man wo se nimpa enkwa no does not consist on the things he has so jesus said when we talk about life it's not what you have or what you don't have it can abrabo jesus said enye niam a wo wo anase niam a wo nie is christ e ye christo christ e ye christo is christ e ye christo that's what paul says see na paul can say i've been crucified with christ me dia wa bo me ni christo ascend you but he said nevertheless i am living wo se mi gusu ametia sie ide I nevertheless I'm still living even though I've been crucified with Christ I'm still living. E wo mu se wo bo me ni Christo ascend you mu na so me gusu ara etne ase. And he said the life that I'm living now. Na abrabo enay me boy de. I am living by faith. E ye jidie mu e na me de ti ase. And that by the son of God who loved me. O nyankopon bo na odo me ni jidie mu. He gave his life. Na odi na brabo ne kwato ho ma me no. Paul is saying my life now is Christ. O se ma brabo enay de e Christ. That is why he said for me to live is Christ. E ti no ka se me ma sitna me ti de e Christ. You see when you fully surrender to Christ. Se o jai wa brabo ni na re e ma Christ. You see let me emphasize here. Ma me kan we yi. I know most of you that are listening to me. You agree with me. What in Bay Ajay said that the people you see who says they go to church and who say they have given their life to Christ and call for ye who won ah okwa oh, sorry na all can say what you are probable am a Christ no. Those who say they are born again. When I walk say ya who yan fufro and even maybe a pastor who says he's a pastor and you are expecting that being a pastor he's supposed to show maturity and 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 a, a, a good life nem po e bia wonim sofo bia hun sa so ye sofo e dia obeda suban bia dia e chese we nyini e wo kristo mu no and when you look at them now so so hwe ye no nyina you can be discouraged na wa ba mu e bu and said if this is what a christian life is all about now if you cause ah kristo so me say na tie dia then i don't need it and na me hia but let me tell you na mama can show it's it's a wrong picture Uh, for you no and your papa you have not been exposed to somebody who has fully surrendered his life to the lord unya hu obi a we gai na brabo nyinara ama christo if you get to somebody who has fully surrendered his life to the lord sa wo shi obi a we di na brabo nyinara ama christo and living for jesus na all tinasi ama jesus de biara e we na brabo mu a you will know 
In fact, you will love to become a Christian. It's like if you meet a pastor who is fully sold to the work of God. And you get closer to that pastor. I'm telling you, you will love God. And you want, if you are not careful, you say, I want to be a pastor. Because you have been exposed to the right person. You know, because of such people, because of people who are not living the Christian life, and they call themselves Christians, it's like those who call themselves men of God, and yet they are not living the life that is expected of men of God. If you look at those people, you will never go to church. That is why Christianity is an individual matter. Matter. And the Bible says the person we are supposed to look up to is Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 going it says since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses let it lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. And let us run the race. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Listen, Jesus is our example. If you can tell me that Jesus didn't do it so I'm not going to do it, then that's right. Because Jesus is the beginner of our faith and the finisher of our faith. In fact, the Christian faith is wrapped up in one person and his name is Jesus. If you look to Jesus, you will never be discouraged. I remember an incident in the book of Acts. The Bible says that one of the disciples of Christ called Stephen they arrested him for preaching the good news. They arrested him for preaching the good news. They did not arrest him because he was political. No, he, they, they arrested him just for preaching the good news. And then they started to stone him. And during the course of the stoning, the Bible says Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. And so, instead of Stephen saying that, oh, all those people that are stoning me, Lord, let fire come and burn each one of them. Because he was full of Christ. He, he did exactly the same thing Jesus did. The Bible says he lifted up his eyes. And he saw Jesus. In a vision. And Jesus was beckoning him. And he saw Jesus smiling to him. And so what he said. Lord forgive these people what they are doing to me. Exactly what Jesus did on the cross. Because when he saw Jesus, he lifted up his eyes and he was looking to Jesus. And Jesus encouraged him. 
You see, whenever we look outside Jesus, you'll be discouraged. If you look to the church, you'll be discouraged. If you look to another Christian, because not all Christians depict the life of Christ, you'll be discouraged. But if you look to Jesus, who is the altar and the finisher of our faith, you will never, never be discouraged. That is why he says, even though pastors are supposed to be good examples, even though Christians are supposed to be good examples, God says, Trust him, don't, look, don't, look, don't look at these people. And she self, we, look to me. Mon I am the one that I've called you. Me and I'm a friend. I am the one that has saved you. Me and I'm a Jew. Because he's the one that saved you from your sin. If you look up to me and you listen to me, I can change your desires. And, and the things you think it will bring you joy. The things you think it will bring you happiness. And I come into your power and you fully surrender to me. It becomes a different story. Your taste will change. You see, it's like a woman that gets pregnant. You see, when the woman gets pregnant, the taste changes. Sometimes, if you're a husband, you get so worried. You say, what is happening to my wife? She didn't like this food. Now that is what she liked. She didn't like this. This is what he liked. Why? Her tastes have changed. Because of the pregnancy. Because she's pregnant. She's carrying a baby. What I'm saying be pregnant with Jesus. If Jesus, if you are pregnant with Jesus, your taste will change. The way you walk will change. Your lifestyle will change. You become careful. It's the same way that the pregnant woman becomes careful because she knows she's carrying a baby. So I need to be careful. When she's sitting down, she's very careful. That is the same way when Jesus comes into your life and you are full of Jesus, you become careful. That's why the songwriter said, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full to his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Brothers, I want you to be full of Jesus. Maybe you have not come to that place. Because sometimes you can see things that are very discouraging. If you say, a room may be a woman, you may be a puny problem. And this morning I came to the studio and then me bahasa to encourage us. Me so I'm crying. I want to come to your home through this medium to encourage you. Let me show and cry. Those of you who have given up because people you trusted have let you die. God says, I should tell you. Look at me. Listen to me. It is because of you. 
maybe today this is the first time you are watching me. But God says, I have this message for you. He said, I should tell you, don't be discouraged. I know what you are thinking. I know what you are going to. If everybody forsake you, I will not forsake you. Look to me and serve me. If you look to God and serve him, you will never, never be discouraged. I pray that the Lord will help every one of us. Especially those of you. Especially those of you who are so discouraged and you are no more even going to church. There are some of you, you were in certain position. In the church. And because you were in a, 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 a higher position in the church, you got exposed to the pastors, the elders, and the leaders. And when you got exposed, you were so discouraged. And you say, how can a man of God do that? I'm here to tell you. You see, we are all running our race. And every one of us, including me standing here, we will stand before God and give account of ourselves to God. So if you have given your life to Christ, I am encouraging you. Don't turn back. And Danny will cheat and make Christo. Don't turn back. And Danny will cheat and make Christo. Sometimes it seems God has forsaken you. As if God is not listening to you. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm here to encourage you. My brother. My sister. Don't give up. And Jem. Don't give up. And Jemu the Biarada. Please don't give up. My prayer is that God will help you. You see, you used to be very active in church. And everybody knew you. No, Why have you all of a sudden backslid? Oh, Why all of a sudden you are drawing back? Remember, Kai. The Bible says, "Remember where you are falling." Remember your first love. When you gave your life to Christ, the way you used to worship, the way you used to go to church, please, I beg you in the name of the Lord, don't go back. Let's serve him. Let's serve him. Let's live for him. In fact, the good news is this. It won't be long. Jesus is coming back. You've heard it several times. But I want to tell you, the day is approaching so fast. Everything that is happening in our world is telling us that the coming of Christ is so close. And the Bible say, what shall a man profit? If he gains the whole world and lose his own soul. I pray that the Lord will help us wherever you are falling. Get up. Sorry. Repent and start serving God. And those of you who are serving God, go ahead. And some of you that are listening to me, maybe because of sickness, you couldn't go to church. I'm going to pray with you because I believe in that God Jesus Christ who is the same yesterday, today and forever 
His power has not changed. It's still effective today. So listen to me. Anyone that is listening to me, that you are sick, wherever you are sick, if you can place your hand there, if it's, if it's something you can touch, if you are there with your maybe your your wife or your children or everything, let them also lay hands on you. I'm going to believe God. You see, God is not limited by distance. And he's going to touch you and bring healing to your body. So wherever you are sick, if you can touch, touch. If you cannot touch and you say it, say it. Because sometimes it's internal and you may not. Maybe it's all over you. But listen to me. Jesus wants to touch you. Jesus is going to walk to your room right now. And after prayer, you will see that something has taken place in your life. You'll be healed completely. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit everyone that is hearing me especially those who are sick wherever they have placed their hand you were wounded for our transgression you said you healed all our diseases and so in the name of Jesus I curse every sickness. I curse every sickness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any demonic spirit. Any satanic spirit. Any witchcraft spirit. Which is behind that sickness. I curse it in the name of Jesus. I bind it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. Sickness go away. Leave that body. In the name of Jesus. Father. I release your healing power to touch every one of them from, from their head to the sole of their feet. Let the healing power of Jesus let the healing power of Jesus flow through their body and bring total healing and deliverance in Jesus name. in Jesus name. Amen. Amen listen do what you couldn't do. Because Jesus have touched you. Are you hearing me? Jesus have touched you. Don't be afraid. He's the great healer. I thank God for your life. And listen to me. I'll be with you another time. That is Next Sunday, the same time, nine o'clock. Talk to your friends, and no one for one casa, your relatives about it. Now, you know, the first day of every month. The first day of every month. Right now, we are in August. So the first of September. It is September da edikaino. It is Tuesday. A a brother. I will come to you on this same network at six thirty in the evening to celebrate the communion with you. Me me no mo ina be ba evidiye so samre ah ye ina be di eradi edidiye so keep so keep that date. And if asa edano eto. And don't forget. Emma Orenfi. First September. 
September da edi kaino. It is Tuesday. Eh ye brada. In the evening. Eh ye yumre. Six thirty. No nsiya. I will come and celebrate communion. Me nemu ina betu nsa didi eradi edidi emu. And I want you to gather all your family. And then ebushani ina entra efidi emu. And 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 make sure that you don't go to any place. Na enko bebiara na ye ina ye ni eradi to sabu. Get your bread ready. Nya opano no. And then your soft drink. And then anonia odi beye. When it comes, I'll give you the instructions. I want you to know I love you. I say I love you. And I know you also love me. Keep praying for me. And I'll also be praying for you. God richly bless you. See you next week the same time. Nine o'clock. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today for the ministry of the Reverend Ransford Obey of CCC. We are so glad you did. For inquiries, please call the following numbers 0243 547 304. 0243 547 304. And 020 823 0090 020 823 0090